What's the weirdest fetish your partner has had? I don't think it's that weird. I'm the weird fetishone in our relationship. But my wife plays Sims a lot and has the mod where you can see them naked and make them have pretty realistic looking ex so sometimes she brings her laptop in the bedroom and way watch it like Orn. Wanted to have ex in front of windows. I lived in a ground floor apartment. My wife likes it when I cook and clean. It's weird and gross. I dated a girl who always wanted me to bite her nipples really really hard. I'm talking hard enough where blood was drawn a few times. It was kind of uncomfortable because I legitimately thought I was going to bite them off but she would insist that a bite harder man shrugging. My ex thought that teaching is sexy. I happened to be a teacher. She ended up cheating on me with another teacher. I'm sure she's met many more teachers that have satisfied her fetish over the years. My ex was into blood play, kinda hard to stay hard when someone has a knife. She liked it when I was wearing dirty overalls, I was all for it, until I found out her father was a painter as in he painted houses. My ex GF had a kink where she'd dress up as herself and act like a total itch all day. My partner is really into bondage, which isn't weird on its own, but wrapping me up in cling film from neck to toes certainly was. She wanted to put things in my ick hole. I had a GF that would like to talk dirty to me when I was getting ready for work, send me suggestive texts all day, then not be in the mood anymore once I got home. Not that weird, but my ex was into working men. I'd get all ready with my tool belt and drills and she'd watch me. Her. You. Ah. Uh, you gonna use all those tools today. Me. Completely oblivious to the obvious sexual undertones. Yeah. I just told you my list of. Projects that need doing. Then my tool belt would come back off. Probably should have kept that one. Had an ex who loved to be called by her sister's name and degraded. Ucking other guys for $500 per hour. They could book her on a website listing the tick boxes she would do, e.g., um on face, um on its. She used pictures I had taken of her on her escort website. Shockingly, I went insane shortly thereafter and we broke up. Less weird but more. What the UCK? He wanted to asterisk UCK me with a loaded gun. He told me it wasn't as fun if it was unloaded. Yeah. Should have been my nope. Stayed with him for four years and regret it. He said he'd ISS in the gap between my teeth I now have braces and never saw him again. To have ice cubes put up her SS followed by a good asterisk SS ucking. An ex liked to lick my SS and suck my toes. I'm a mon, if that matters. I always thought it was weird but if it made her happy who was I to play God and deny it? Getting a good rim job does feel pretty good though I won't lie. I don't think I'll let anyone else suck my toes though. The only time I ever dated someone on POF we were drinking. And I thought she was going down to top me off and she went right to eating my SS. Next thing you know she's trying to convince me to leather peg me with this 24 inches monster strap on. I was supper drunk and was scared to death to fall asleep and get raped. Colon dash opening parenthesis. My BF likes to put used socks on my face, for some reason it really turns him on. He doesn't have a foot fetish, just one for socks. He has a pair heckeeps in his closet just for that purpose. He's a great guy but that thing is something I still after 5 years don't get and don't like, but it's really important to him and I'm the first woman he ever confessed it to, so I put up with it. Edit. Never thought this would get so many upvotes. Also feels really good to get this off my chest since it's bothered me a lot. Stay kinky everyone smiley face edit too. Appreciate everyone's curiosity and everything, especially the kind and non-judgmental comments. I've answered to the best of my and the questions are getting so repetitive that I've decided to not answer to them anymore. My ex used to get off on the idea of getting messy, wanted to get a plastic tarp and cans of whipped cream, jars of pudding, chocolate syrup, cake ICINGETC. Wasn't something I was into but whatever, never got around to it though. The most she did was give me a BJ with her birthday cake icing smeared all over my ick. Dated a girl who wanted me to fist her. Vaginally and anally. We never made it to the back door because we never got the whole fist in the front door. For size reference I'm 6 feet 5,280 pounds and have hands the size of an NFL wide receiver, she knew that and still wanted me to fist her. The ex was amazing though, and the attempts at started weird, but it became fun. Never had another girl who wanted that and never had the desire to tree again. I'm an armpit guy. So I'm probably on this list. Wife wants me to have a job. She would call her dad up whilst she was pegging me and try to have a normal conversations. 
was so odd. He genuinely loved if I burped while we were kissing. And wanted to smell my farts. Like. SS on his lap and inhale. He told me that one. Never tried it. I'm not to yuck someone's yum but it weighs too much for me. Long after I left him but uh, horror on or gore porn, he invited me to a party chat full of people, where he posted all his weird anime gore, horror porn. It wasn't even a chat room for that and from going thruth chats, it didn't appear anyone else was to into it either, considering the chat was for an online game and not that. Never again. My old FWB liked when I bit his ding dong. Had a ex that really enjoyed sleeping with my friends without me knowing. Wasn't really my thing, turned her on a lot more than it did me. This girl I knew way back when, she had a thing for tentacles. Yeah, I don't know either. She said she liked the way they slither around the girl's body and violated every orifice. She wanted the same done to her. Listen, I'm only one man. I only got two hands and a small peeper. There was only so much I could do to slather lube all over her body with these two stiff tentacly dongs and my shrimpy poking in and out of three holes simultaneously. Okay. I get rough X. Get it. But I was with a girl and she, without prior discussion, moved my hand to her throat and kept telling me to squeeze harder. I need a little warning if I'm gonna have to assault you to get you off, you know? Just a little. A woman I almost ended up dating, long story but we did some stuff, was into being impregnated. That was her number one kink whenever something sexual went down. Heard, oh yeah please knock me up, Marathon once. My girlfriend likes to be blindfolded, tied up naked, and drugged, weed. Then just left on the bed for hours while I just have my way with her. She likes when I just casually do it. Like, I'll get her ready, mess around with her for a bit, then go make myself food, eat, rest, and come back to her when I'm ready. My ex liked for me to pretend to speak from Mienes in a Mickey Mouse voice. It was a serious turn on. Don't ask me how. I don't get it. One of my exes wanted to ISS on me, so yeah, probably that. Mother of my first child has a serial killer fetish. Probably should have figured out she wasn't a keeper at that point. Autistic people have read it. What in your opinion is the weirdest thing neurotypicals do? My family watches dialogue heavy shows, then talks over the critical dialogue. Bravo Channel and Downtown Abbey are tough. Expect you to know how they're feeling when they straight up lie about how they feel. Are you mad? No, I'm not mad. Oh, good. Then later on they tell you they were mad, and are upset that you didn't pick up on it. What? Not really weird. But it surprises me how easy they do it. Make friends like going to a bar and just talk to people I would just sit there awkwardly not knowing what Osei would love to have friends. Like some shopping with or just hang out. Sometimes it feels lonely. Everything about communication. Like small talk they do it effortlessly among themselves, but if I start a small talk in the same circumstances, it looks more like me torturing them for information. If you want me to do something, just ask me. Don't imply it and expect me to just know you want me toto it. Don't drop hints then get mad that I didn't give them. Tell me to do the thing and I'll do the thing. But unless you explicitly tell me you want me to do the thing, I won't understand that you want me to do the thing. My mom would drive me nuts with this. She say something along the lines of, I have to clean the kitchen after work, then get home from work and be mad that I didn't clean the kitchen because I knew he wanted it done. Like no ma'am, you said you were going to do it after work so I assumed that's what you meant because that's what you told me. The way people maintain eye contact while having a conversation is creepy as hell to me. I have to basically stare at someone's mouth when I'm talking to them to keep up the illusion that I'm making eye contact. Looking right into someone else's eyes is uncomfortable in a way that is hard to explain. It just feels wrong. Ask for your reasoning and then get mad when you pro a detailed explanation of your reasoning. People saying one thing and meaning an entirely different thing. It's super annoying and I don't understand. This is an actual good question for once on this sub. Body language. I always thought it was just the overt pantomime people sometimes do. I was well into my 30s before a girlfriend casually pointed out that I had no grasp of body language and proceeded to break down a few interactions from her point of view, highlighting the cues she took from people's body language and actually taking the time to point it out. My whole life I always felt like people had some extra level of communication subtext going on that IWAS missing, 
Turns out I have was I guess. I can't imagine how much easier socializing must be when you can intuitively tell whether someone is interested or not. Or what their emotional state is. Like based in the way they hold their shoulders or how they touch their hair or whatnot. I have to spend a few years around someone, learning their nuances before I'll even get a glimpse of any of that, and that still takes annoy focus to make holding a conversation difficult. Look. Sometimes I can just sit down on a sofa and not do or say anything for hours. It doesn't mean that I'm angry or sad. I'm not even bored. I'm sorry if I'm not jumping around, laughing and smiling. People always assume that I'm angry because I'm not openly expressing my joy. I can be happy and quiet. Leave me alone. Dropping hints and expecting us to just get it, and then getting frustrated that we don't get it. Like just tell us what you want and stop playing mind games. Work full time, be in a relationship and have kids, while also doing their own cleaning, grocery shopping, personal hygiene and having friends. I find it crazy. They're like superhumans. I couldn't do that. They just lie to each other constantly about everything from their emotions to what they are doing that day. I don't get it. I know so many people who would rather die than tell someone else that they are upset with them. Deleted. Not reacting when I say something. So I'll repeat myself and then they get weird or are like, yeah I heard you. Okay, so let me know that? And I mean this in ways where I am directly talking get to them, not just in group settings. Person. Explain yourself me. Explains myself person. I don't want hear your excuses. Sometimes we answer a question they didn't want answered. Them. Why does this happen to me? Me. Because you went into the situation underprepared. Them. Deadpan face. Pointless awkward small talk. Like we both know the weather, and I know you don't really care that much about it and neither do I silence would be better. Or you could jump right into something that actually interests you and you're passionate about. I don't understand why being social needs to include pointless empty speech. Enjoy crowds, concerts, malls, clubs way too much going on. From movement to brushing up against others to all the obvious noise that doesn't have a break. Just why? Having full-blown conversations with people they've never met while out on a non-social activity, like shopping for example. Assuming that because I'm not doing anything I'm a pen to hang out, especially when people just show up out of nowhere and expect me to be fine with it. I know you use this subreddit Alex, Stop M-E-S-S-I-N-G-W-I-T-H -S -S My Routine. How people remember other people's names Andre cognize them so easily. I cannot picture people faces in my memory so I remember people more with other contexts like the sound of their voice and their typical hairstyles or how they dress. One thing I've noticed is that first impressions matter a lot. If you don't click during your first couple of interactions with someone, then it will be e much harder to befriend them. Even if you have interesting conversations later, I also don't get why people prefer to hint instead of directly communicating. Lying to me in a very obvious, unconvincing way because they think I'll be annoyed with the truth, when in actual fact the only thing that's annoyed at me is how badly managed the lie is. The way they think. Like we can be talking about A, and my brain links B to C to D to E, then I bring up thought E and everyone is just looking at me as if to say, that's so beyond off topic. What ice wrong with you? Also sarcasm and idioms. Everyone laughs at sarcastic joke and I just sit there not getting it. Pretending to laugh obviously, and might figure it out 10 minutes later. Always make me feel like I don't fit in. Neurotypical people saying they're a little autistic. Or saying they understand because they have a relative who's on the spectrum. It took me a really long time to realize that when NT people ask you how you are they usually don't actually want to know the honest answer. It is just being used as a greeting, still weird to me. I have my basic reply now but I still find it really hard to respond to different ways of asking it, like, what's up, for example. Ask me to clarify about something autism related and then berate me for using autism as an excuse. Refuse to value our voices typically on autistic topics. I honestly don't know if it's to do with me being on the spectrum, but I really just don't get sports and sports team loyalty at all. Like, not even slightly. It's a group of people running around after a ball, puck, whatever.
doing nothing really productive, and yet people can get invested to the point of aggression in it. I mean, I'm aware from the amount of time and money spent on sports that there's clearly something there, but it's an utter mystery to me.